guys how's it going welcome back to the channel so just a little bit of background information before we get started with today's video uh, so you may have guessed already I'm talking about the artillery again I love this stuff can't get away from it but uh, September 28th 1781 on that date the American and French artillery finally arrived here in Yorktown Virginia and they didn't come alone they brought a bunch of these weapons with them they brought about 130 of them, to be exact. And, well, over the course of about a week, the American and French artillery, they kept firing over and over and over again into Yorktown until eventually Cornwallis surrendered. And what made the artillery so effective in Yorktown is they were able to do that. Fire continuously for days on end until eventually the British had no real choice but to surrender. And there are many things that make the artillery effective for the 18th century. For one thing, you had 24-pound cannons that fired 24-pound round shot, weighing in at about that weight. Give you an idea, this one, this is a measly six-pounder. It's very, very small by comparison. So you imagine how big that 24-pounder was. That's just cannons. You also saw howitzers and mortars of the 18th century. Well, they fired bombs. And during the siege of Yorktown, the American and French artillery had ten and a half inch mortars that fired bombs that were about that diameter. Yeah, they were huge, they packed a punch, and they started breaking down the earthworks that were at Yorktown, little by little, bit by bit. But more than any of that, there's one tool, one thing that the American artillery, the French artillery, even the British artillery, as a matter of fact, the Dutch and even the Spanish artillery, they were using during this conflict and, well, it kind of goes by the wayside. Nobody really likes to talk about it all that much, probably because not many people even realize it exists. So that's something that uh, I've made the focus of today's video. Uh, so it's a tool that uh, you would load inside one of these weapons, and it wouldn't go in the muzzle. It would go right here. Loading artillery was pretty simple. A full cannon cartridge, like the one seen here, would have been tamped down through the muzzle so that it was seated directly underneath a vent. And once that happened, the hole would be picked through. Once a hole was poked through that powder bag, it had to be filled with some sort of fuse composition. And to do that, the artillery had two options. First was this one. When it came time to prime the weapon, a powder horn would be uncorked and held across the vent until loose powder spilled over the top of that vent, and then that powder charge would then be lit off. And it worked really well. As you can see here, when Slow Match touches powder, well, it goes off pretty violently. But... Now, while that method worked, there were some issues with it. For one thing, it took a lot of gunpowder to get that fuse made. And for another thing, black powder is just downright filthy. After just a few shots, that vent was going to get clogged, it was going to get filthy, and misfire started to happen. So eventually, they resorted to method two. This is that special tool that I was referencing in the beginning of the video. It's called a priming tube. They were pretty easy to use. They were pretty awesome at that. Yeah, I thought I'd just let it speak for itself. Through the use of these priming tubes, artillerists were made faster on a battlefield. They were made much more efficient because the rate of misfires went down drastically because a flame was being forced from that tube directly through that vent into that powder bag. They became so popular in Europe in the, around the mid-18th century, and eventually the Americans picked it up too. And, well, they all had their different methods of exactly how they were to be made, the fuse composition that had to be placed inside of them, and our museum, we have our own method too. When I'm done with this, I'll show you. The American artillery did not have their own standardized manual. So that does beg the question, how did they know how to do all this stuff? Well, it's not like they were completely up a creek without a paddle, because the British had manuals. Matter of fact, they had a pretty good one in 1780. It was called A Treatise of Artillery by an English mathematician and artillerist by the name of John Muller. He wrote a lot of good stuff in this book, but for today, we're going to focus on just one chapter in particular, Tubes Used in Quick Firing, on page 200 of that book. There it is right there. If you'd like to pause the video, you can go ahead and read this page. But uh, in this manual, he writes that English tubes used in quick firing were made of tin. They were about five or six inches in length, and they looked similar to the one you see here in my hand. They were capped with a rim filled with gunpowder, moistened with spirits of wine. 
and theirs is made of metal. The ones we use are going to be a little bit different, and the ones used by the French were a little bit different. He writes that they used a small bit of reed that was capped with a bit of wood. It was also filled with that same fuse composition of wine and gunpowder. Now, ours is modeled after one of those tin quills you just saw, but the one we're using isn't made of metal. It's made of paper, because the last thing we want is there to be a metal projectile flying out of the vent of a cannon when we have visitors nearby. So, we have modified it slightly, but this is what we use, and it works just as well. So now, the Continental Army in Camp New Yorktown is actually in need of more priming tubes, so at this point, I'm going to stop talking so all of you can sit back, relax, and just enjoy the process. Now that we have the quills made, now it's time to get them filled with fuse composition. Now I'm not going to use gunpowder moistened with red wine. I like to drink my wine. Uh, so what we're going to need is my quill. I'm going to need a pipe cleaner. I'm going to need a pick. I'm also going to use more of that Elmer's glue. I'm also using gunpowder. Now guys, if you're not trained with gunpowder, don't mess with that stuff. But uh, let's get started. Now also, yeah, something to just uh, go over. I cut out the hole using scissors. My boss came up behind me while I was doing that. was like, hey, why not use the hole puncher, you know, that I bought for that, and to which I responded, I forgot we had it. Anyway. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pick through the quill and make sure that there are no blockages inside of it. A good way to tell is if you can see light through there like you see right there. So it looks like we're good. I'm just going to set this aside to dry. Now let's see if it works or not. I'm going to use the priming tube you just saw me make to prime our cannon today. Gun attention! Search peace! Clear! Load! Hey! 
All right, on three, you give me that final command. One, two, three! Fire! Secure the pace! It only took 30 seconds to do that. That's what artillerists were dealing with during the siege of Yorktown. The only downside is they break. So you keep having to make more, but it is worth it. And yeah, that's it. That's about all I got, at least for now. Somebody recently told me that one of these days I can have access to a GoPro. And I'm going to have a lot of fun with that GoPro. Um, but uh, for now, that's all I got. So uh, feel free to comment, like, subscribe. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Have a great day. Hey, you want to be on YouTube? You want to be on YouTube?